One of the great challenges of especially uh, uh, K-12, but of life, is how do we manage with children, with adults who feel left out and excluded. In the world of special needs children, certainly in the world of Special Olympics, it is the primary metaphor for everything we do. Those who have been excluded, uh, we call it an inclusion revolution. How do we create an inclusion revolution? So these skills, uh, uh, we've distilled and we're designing curriculum just now, actually, to actually help children develop. You know, you've heard of growth mindsets, right? Uh, what about an inclusive mindset? What are the skills and qualities that could contribute to, to being able to help young people and adults learn these? A signature skill of the, inclusive, of the inclusive mindset is this one, to look in a room and ask one question. Uh, Abby, you said this uh, in your remarks. Who's missing? Who's missing? When you look at the gym, when you walk down the hall, when you go to the lunchroom, when you're in the class, uh, the includer asks, who's missing? Who's not at the birthday party? Uh, the, the most frequent thing I hear from parents of children who have, who have children with Down syndrome is that they've never been invited to a birthday party. Never. Never. So when you have your birthday, for, for our kids, you have our birthday parties, ask yourself this question. If you have an inclusive mindset, it will come naturally to you. Who's missing? Doesn't mean you have to have everybody. Just ask yourself the question, and immediately the skill becomes a res what I would call a decision-making vector that allows you to potentially see the possibility of being an includer. Now, of course, we're divided in the country, as we've talked about earlier, on all these things. And we're most divided on whether schools should have an academic mission or uh, address these larger humanware issues. But actually, the truth is, gang, we're not. And here's data. If you need it, we'd be happy to provide it to you. My colleague, Mark Brackett, may talk about a more recent meta-analysis. But this is an analysis of over 200 social and emotional learning interventions. Just look at the fourth bullet point under the green arrow. When done well, evidence-based interventions with these kinds of skills brought into the whole school culture and climate produce gains not just in behavior, not just in reducing suspensions and so, and so on, not just in happiness and th these kinds of things, but also in academic achievement, in standardized test scores. So when people say to you it's an either or, it's not. No brain ever came to school without a body. It's just never happened. No analytic intelligence ever came without a heart. It just, it, it's just never happened. So the idea that we shouldn't be training each other to see what children can't see themselves, to see them, to help them see themselves and others, is ridiculous. Uh, well, we've got conflicts about funding. No, we don't. This is Utah parents. What do they want to prioritize with, uh, with COVID-era uh, funds? Social and emotional wellness. Okay, so all of these divisions, I dare say, are, are myths. I, I don't have time, wish I had time to get into this, but I just want to highlight this one top, top line here. Uh, the number one concern that aligns teachers and parents uh, is that it is essential right now, the currency of our time, in my view. The currency of this realm is trust. And until and unless we focus on our capacity to strengthen the trust between us across the apparent divides, we will not be able to solve any of our more pressing problems. So you'll hear lots of this language. Some people like emotional intelligence. My colleague Mark Brackett loves this term. Some people like values education. Well, we like values education. Some people will say, no, no, no. Cleveland calls the work they do in the Cleveland Public Schools humanware. Okay? Uh, many people want to prevent bullying, which is the isolation, the exclusion, the name calling, the contempt that comes from a lack of self-awareness and relationship skills. Bullying prevention. Oh, we can do that. That's fine. Suicide prevention. Again, I won't go into it because we got a master class on it. Substance abuse prevention. Many school districts, oh, we need a substance abuse prevention program. That's clear. We need that. We have, a, obviously, a substance abuse problem in the country. Character education. Some of these terms lean a little right. 
Some of them lean a little left. Personally, I could care less. Our interest in a room like this is children and families. That's it. The language doesn't matter. The language doesn't matter. First Lady Cox's term, educator wellness. The language doesn't matter. The skills, the values, the attitudes, using the best evidence we have to align the interests of parents and teachers around these issues, that does matter. That's a matter of life and death for individual children and for our country. So here's my conclusion from my sixth grade essay. Any sixth grade teachers, I'm considering this my sixth grade concluding paragraph. When it comes to supporting the emotional strength and safety of our children, parents and teachers are not divided. When it comes to social emotional learning and academics, parents and teachers are not divided. And when it comes to teaching social and emotional learning and promoting equity, parents and teachers are not divided. We want all of these things. And the fact that a small percentage of people, remember, 75% of Americans have never been on Twitter. 75%. And we're responding to the 1% of the people on Twitter who are the most hostile. As though we're divided. It's a lie. It's just not true, my friends. So I think this is our moment. We build. We don't tear apart. Other people tear apart. That's not our job. That's not what we do. That's not why we went into this profession. We teach through relationships. We know this. Not through hostility. Nobody ever taught a child by screaming and yelling and, and, and berating them and bullying them. It's just not what we do. We develop skills. We don't harp on weaknesses. We, sh we promote shared meaning, not despair, not giving up, not hopelessness. We educate through shared purpose, not by isolation, not by despair, not by loneliness, not by ending our connection. We're experts. This room is experts at social, cultural, and interpersonal belonging. Show me a room of better talent in that field. There isn't one. So this is our moment. Our kids need us. Our families want us to respond to the call. Our country needs us. So I just say, why not? Why not every teacher in Utah trained? Fill in the blank. If you don't like social emotional learning, I'm sorry I keep saying that, but I just know that sometimes is a red flag for people. Fill in the blank. Why not a curriculum and a strategy supported by teachers in every district? A lot of superintendents here. Get the parents involved. It doesn't have to be a, a us versus them. Build a process where we can create a systemic response to the needs of our children. And as Abby said at the beginning, uh, why not in times of pain and division, a commitment to empathy? I mean, it doesn't have to be that complicated. I'll leave you with one short video. It comes from uh, our work in Special Olympics in promoting these skills and gifts in schools. Um, it comes from a high school in Rhode Island, and I'm sure it could and will someday be coming from many, many high schools throughout Utah because of First Lady Cox's initiative and because of so many of you. Take a look, listen to the language if you can, and then we'll wrap it up. Penguin? Penguin? Patriots. Penguin. Patriots, there we go. Yeah. Jason loves sports. Yeah, yeah. Jay loves the Patriots. Who who you like? Gronk? Ah. Say it. Gronk. Gronk. Everyone's curious, like living with a person with like disabilities, like how daily life is and I say, I don't know, just it's normal. Be a good boy, right? I am. I know you. It's like a normal brother relationship. We fight a lot, and we also have great moments together. It's it's great. It's life. You know, I think that when you talk about Evan and Jay, you talk about you know, they're really one person here. It's not Evan. It's not Jay. It's Evan and Jay. She's just like a big ball of joy. A student who typically you wouldn't hear much communication from, but when you do hear it from him, you feel it.
He greets you in the morning when you walk in. He wants to get up and make sure everybody's smiling and having a good time. So he may go by you, tap you on the shoulder. He may make a silly face. Who's on your basketball team? Evan. Evan. Who's he again? My brother? I'm a brother. My brother. Evan and Jerry instrumental in our inclusion movement. Um, Evan Hallberg alone is the dream for a teacher. Programs like TOPS, Special Olympics, and most recently Unified Sports have provided a foundation for individuals of all abilities to express themselves and succeed in society. You don't really know until you're up there and that your heart's pounding knowing that you have to like give this page and a half long speech in front of everyone. I know that when I graduate from high school, I will miss the times I've spent with my brother. Even the little things, like car rides at school, with the radio booming, and him dancing in the back seat. I started like sobbing a little bit, and then Jay put his arm around me, and then after that I knew I was kind of like done. But I, I remember that I'm talking in front of the entire school and I'm on TV, so I had to keep going, making a contribution to a huge movement is the biggest thing anyone can really do. It feels, it feels humbling. For this is why I choose to include. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> Through sports like Unified, I can trust everyone to protect my brother. Because they know that he's no different than anyone else. Brings like no greater joy. Yeah.